So today's video is my nine weeks pregnancy vlog. I'm currently nine weeks one day and I want to start off this video with a really exciting picture which is from the ultrasound that I got done last week. Last week when I was eight weeks, four days and I think this is so exciting. Um, it shows the baby here and you can see the head, the body, the legs, it shows the yolk sac and basically there of course is the uterus and here they have the measurement of the CRL which is the crown, the head, to the rump length and mine measured at 1.96 centimeters which is 0.77 of an inch and I think that's so exciting. We weren't able to listen to the heartbeat but we were able to see it on the ultrasound. There's like these little marks on it that shows the heartbeat so I think next time in four weeks we'll be able to hear the heartbeat on a Doppler but yeah I just want to start out this video with this really exciting piece of information and something that I, I had been anticipating for so long because I know like during the first few weeks of pregnancy I had a few symptoms but like nothing like crazy morning sickness or you know, like crazy food aversions or anything so I was kind of doubting myself am I still pregnant I know I'm running more tired and such but just seeing this on the ultrasound gives me more like reassurance to tell me that yeah it is real it's happening and things are progressing just fine so since my other video, which I did on January 30th, I've had two prenatal appointments since. I didn't see the doctor at that time, I spoke with an RN, and it was basically just a bunch of admin stuff. The second part of that appointment um, was the blood work time, and if you know anything about prenatal blood work, which I wasn't too familiar before um, I had it done, but basically they collect eight vials of blood. So eight vials is a ton of blood. Usually when I get my blood work during my annual checkup, they only do two vials, which is very manageable. But eight vials was crazy. So basically, of course, they have the needle in your arm the whole time and they keep switching out those little vials. So they did that eight times. Every time I kind of felt like a little pinch when she's um, putting that little needle back into the bottle, like snapping it in. And I felt myself, like my head was starting to get really heavy. My ears were starting to buzz. I was like starting to zone out. I was really trying to focus on other things. I was like trying to think about my dogs, something neutral, you know, aside from like the blood that was being happening. Um, but yeah, I couldn't and I felt like so lightheaded. So they had some staff come over, check my vitals, give me some juice, ask me questions like, oh, what is your birthday and such. Yeah, basically I just felt so faint and lightheaded. So a warning to anyone who is going to that first prenatal appointment to get all that blood work done, make sure you eat something beforehand. I did eat something, I had a small snack beforehand, but I don't think it was enough and like I don't think I was mentally prepared enough to have all that blood drawn. Um, but anyways, that was the first appointment, that was done. I did that on February 1st, so that was about like 20 days ago, it's currently February 20th. So fast forward to my second prenatal appointment, which was done last Thursday. Um, so I was highly anticipating that appointment because I knew they were going to do an ultrasound and I just couldn't wait for that. So yeah, I'll just go ahead and start talking about the ultrasound. So as you may know, the first ultrasound, the baby isn't too big, so they can't do it on the belly. So they actually did a vaginal ultrasound. They have this little wand that they'll insert in maybe like one and a half to two inches. And from there, they'll kind of like move it around to get different angles. And of course, they'll be projected onto a monitor. And you will see like um, you'll see the uterus, you'll see the baby moving because during the eight to nine week period, it does have like joints that it can move. It can move its elbows, its legs, and so yeah, it wasn't just like floating around the water. Like we actually saw it move a little bit, which was so exciting. So let me go ahead and just insert the ultrasound clip. And as you can see already, the baby's right here. So I'm head here. You can see the arms developing here, legs. And we measure the baby from head here down to the butt. So if you see these bumps, each of those is the heartbeat. Oh. So it's just the level of ultrasound you need to listen is a little bit stronger, so we like to wait until the baby's more developed before we do. So again, this is a sideways view, so the face is here, back of the head, and the back and the butt here. <laughs> you know, actually, we should change your due date, because it's a full week off when I look okay. at it from this angle. So your new due date's going to be September 24th. Okay, and I'll print good. this with the due date on it so you can right. see. And so this thing here, that's the yolk sac, that's what's giving the baby nutrients right now. That looks normal. All right. So you're actually eight weeks, four days. Okay. Help speed it up. Mm -hmm. I know. So regarding symptoms, um, it's pretty much the same as of my last update. I still feel pretty tired, but I know that's normal in the first trimester. And the doctor once again reassured me that tiredness is normal. You'll pick up more energy during the second trimester. Um, food aversions. I don't have like strong aversions. If I had to pick one thing that I don't want to eat, it would be meat products. 
like red meat, chicken, fish. I don't really care for fish right now either. It's not like that I'll throw up if I have to eat it, so it's not that strong. But also at the same time, I don't have an inclination to want to eat it, which is really funny because in the past I used to eat chicken almost every day. Um, but now I can have like a few pieces, but I really don't prefer the taste right now. I much more gravitate towards like fruits and vegetables. And I did read something that um, you should listen to your cravings because it's your body's way of telling you like, oh, you need more of a certain nutrient. For example, chilled oranges are really good right now. Um, basically any fruits. And generally I'm not a picky eater, but I guess during pregnancy I do have a lot more preferences and I find myself becoming more picky and I want to eat certain things um, like at certain times. So basically I like to do a lot of my own cooking so I can control what I eat, how much I eat and such. It's a lot more stress-free and I guess like I can suit my cravings and feel better and not have like this nagging sensation on like, oh, I really want this certain food, you know? So yeah, basically I can solve all those problems. So I'm still finding myself using the restroom quite a bit. And the most disruptive portion of that is when I have to go at night because every night without fail, I go at least three times. Three times is the minimum. Usually the first time will be around midnight. The second will be maybe around like 4 a.m. And the third time could be like anywhere during the middle of the night. Maybe it's like 10 p.m. if I go to sleep too early. Um, but even if I don't drink water before, I'll still have to go. And a lot of times I'll like wake up and I have to go so bad. Um, yeah, so it's basically like I guess more pressure on the bladder from the uterus growing and such. But I heard that um, it just gets worse throughout pregnancy, so I guess just kind of try to get used to it. Um, but yeah, after I use the restroom though, I feel like so dehydrated, so I have to drink more water, which I guess perpetuates the cycle in itself. Another annoying symptom is I find myself being more moody. I know that there's more hormones such as estrogen and progesterone, so it kind of brings me back to when I was a teenager where I'll know something in my head is logical, so I'll try to tell myself a certain thing but like my emotions say otherwise and my actions like I want to do a certain action that's more comfortable and not with the logic that I know is right and how I should behave so it's just kind of weird and frustrating um, I feel more emotional lately too I can cry more easily so I just try to be you know think about positive things don't let myself get into like an emotional like spiral if I know something is going to upset me or like just try not to think about it, move on to something positive because I am more emotional. It's a little bit annoying, um, but I think it's something that's also very controllable at the same time, as long as you're aware of it. And um, I know I'm doing a lot of reading to know like what symptoms are normal, what to expect, so I can be as prepared as possible. Regarding weight gain, I haven't gained any weight yet. The last I weighed in at the doctor was 11 and a half pounds. Um, I'm 5'4", so I think the typical amount of weight or the healthy weight that you should gain is like between 25 to 35 pounds. So now for pregnancy apps. I know last time I mentioned Glow Nurture is an app that I really like. I still use it, but there's actually another app that I added to my phone um, that I check daily as well. So this one is called The Bump, and basically it looks like this. It shows you how long in inches, ounces, and they compare the baby size to a fruit, as is very typical. But the thing I like most about this app is you can launch it week by week, and they will show you a 3D depiction of what the baby looks like right now. And actually week 9 is a very exciting week because it has officially become a fetus from being an embryo. So it shows you here and it also shows you that the heart has divided into four chambers and it also says that the teeth buds are forming this week as well. It used to have a tail but now the tail has disappeared. I know like in the previous depictions um, before, I know like the spine was developing so it kind of ends and looks like a tail. I guess I can pull up one of those old ones to show you, but yeah, at least week nine, it actually looks like a baby, a really small baby. So yeah, let's just go back a few weeks. Um, let's go to week five, which is when I did the vlog last. So it would be the size of an apple seed. And then, yeah, so that's what it looks like. Week five, there's so much difference that four weeks makes. Um, here you can see that tail that I was talking about and yeah, it does not look so much as a baby as a week nine. So anyways, I think that should wrap up for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and stay tuned for my next pregnancy vlog.